test mic. What's up guys, Learning with Rich here. In this video, let's do the heating and cooling load analysis in Revit MEP. So as you can see, I have a building here. So the spaces and zones are already created. So it looks messy because I have shown here the zone. So just in case you do not want to show uh, the you do not want to show the HVAC zone, you can just simply go to the visibility graphic overrides and then after that you look for HVAC zones and then you can just uncheck this options color fill interior fill and reference lines just leave the boundary so that we can only see here our spaces all right so there you go so it's not messy anymore so the first thing that we are going to do for the heating and cooling loads is let us specify the project information let's just make sure that this is an office so the settings that we'll be using for the heating and cooling loads analysis so we will be doing it here on our office. So to make sure that this is an office building, so let's go to the manage. Let's go to the project information. And then after that, I'll just select here the energy settings. And let's go to the advanced settings. And then there you go. So the building type here by default is um office which is what we are going to use okay so that is what we are going to do now if i'm going back here on the first uh, dialog box so as you can see you have several options here for the energy analytical model so first of all for the mode so for the mode i think it would be better if we just use here use conceptual masses and uh building elements so I'm just going to use this one. Why? Because this mode does not require the architectural model, including both the conceptual masses and building elements. So you can use this mode when the model contains only masses or only building elements. So it also supports a mix of the two types of elements, which is useful when performing energy optimization during the uh, mixed design method. So as you can see, you also have other option here, which is use building elements and use conceptual masses. So these are uh, these modes relate to the legacy behavior. So they are provided only to support older models. So some advanced energy settings relate only to these legacy modes. Those are settings are unavailable when the mode is set to use conceptual masses and building elements. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. Now, the an another option here or another parameter is ground plane. So you can specify the level below which the energy model surface is assumed to be in contact with the ground for heat transfer. So I'll just use here level one. So for a building where a uh, where the ground floor, uh, ground floor is partially underground, for example, built into a slope, Use the level with the most exposure as the ground plane. Okay, so the differences in the resulting energy analysis are typically fairly minor. And then you also have here the project pace. So all building elements and conceptual masses assigned to the uh, specific or specified pace or an earlier building pace are included in the energy analysis. So elements and masses assigned to a later building pace are omitted from the energy analysis. So I'll just use the new construction pace here. All right, and then you have other options here, which is analytical space resolution parameter and also the analytical surface resolution parameter. So it provides important information used by the algorithm that generates the energy uh, model. So the default values for these parameters provide an optimum balance between energy model accuracy and processing time for most Revit models. So, however, because Revit model size, complexity, and quality can vary widely, you may need to modify these parameters to provide greater accuracy or to reduce processing time of the energy model or both. Okay, so when you increase the value for um, 
analytical space resolution, and analytical surface resolution, the processing time required to create the energy model is significantly reduced. So when you reduce the value for these parameters, the processing time required to create the energy model is increases significantly. All right? And reducing these values does not necessarily result in a more accurate energy model. So for example, while a lower analytical space resolution value can result in a smaller gaps between Revit elements, it can also lead to the omission of some analytical spaces due to gaps between um, architectural elements that were ignored at the higher setting. And then you also have here perimeter zone depth. So you can specify the distance here measured inward from the exterior walls to define the perimeter zone. Okay, so this setting should always be used in conjunction with the next setting here, which is the perimeter zone division. So you select this option. You select this option to divide the perimeter of the building, excluding the core into discrete thermal zone. So this setting should always be enabled when the perimeter zone depth is zero. Okay, so perimeter zones result in more accurate energy consumption estimates. So like, for example, in the late summer afternoons, a west facade may encounter solar heat gain while the east facade does not. So perimeter zoning allows energy analysis of these perimeters to be handled separately. All right, so you can always check the help file of the Revit 2020 if you want. Okay, and then you have the, what's this, um, average vertical void height threshold. So this value is used to avoid the application of unwanted thermal loads and properties to analytical spaces like ceiling voids and small vertical spaces such as um, cl closets and small storage spaces. So when an analytical space's average height falls within this threshold, for example, it will automatically be assigned to unconditioned zone equipment. So all analytical spaces assigned as unconditioned are not included in any systems analysis. Okay, so analytical spaces do not have height. So the average vertical uh, void height threshold is determined by dividing the volume by the area. Okay, so this is the default. Okay, so that's the default, six feet. And then you also have the horizontal void chase area threshold. So similar to the average vertical void height threshold, this value is used to avoid the application of unwanted thermal loads and properties to, analy uh, to analytical spaces. When an analytical spaces area falls within this um, threshold, for example, it will also be assigned to unconditioned zone equipment for exclusion from any systems analysis. All right. So hopefully you get that one. So I'll just select your OK after using the default setting. OK. And then after that, I'm now going to select your OK. Now, one thing, I'm going to select the an Analyze tab here and then go to the Heating and Cooling Loads. Okay, so here on the heating and cooling loads, the next thing that uh, we are going to do is we are going to specify the location. Okay, so to specify the location, there you go. You just need to change here the location. So like, for example, I'm going to select um, uh, default city. I'm not going to use the internet mapping service. So let's say I use the default city let's say i use um uh -huh. say so use indianapolis all right so i'll use this one indianapolis so i select that one okay and then i'll just use the default settings here okay so i'm going to select that one 
And then for the, oops, sorry, for the weather, let me just go to the weather. For example, that's the location. So I go to the weather. Of course, you can always select the location of the, the project that you are working on. You can select any city that you want, okay? Or you can also select here, internet mapping service. Okay, so I select here the weather, and then I'm going to specify here. Okay, so I'll just use this one. Use the closest weather station, the Indianapolis. And then for the weather, so these are the weather. For the heating design temperature, so I'll just use the default value there, minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit and 1 for the clearness number. Okay. So I'm now going to select here, okay. Okay, and then I'm going to select, oh, um, I'll just use calculate later on. So I'm just checking some more settings here. So I'll just um, save the settings first, okay. And then let me go here on the area. So where is my area? Area, it's on the architecture. And then there's the room and area and then i select here area and volume computations okay and then all right area and volume so at wall finish i'm going to select that so areas and volumes so it's all good so it's already selected by default so I'm now going to select your OK. Okay, and then I'm going back again to the analyze and heating and cooling loads. What else? So I also want to specify here the building infil uh, infiltration class. Okay, so I'm going to make it um, tight. For this one so for example the building is so tight okay so no losses will go out or go in and then what else for the report type do we have other options here simple standard detailed okay so i want a detailed one and then use load credits so i'm going to check this one Okay, right, and another thing, I'm going to select here the details, wherein you can see here your zones, zone ABC. Any spaces that doesn't have an assigned zone, it will go to the default uh, zone. So that's why if I select that one, this is actually not assigned to any zone. All right, so if I'm going to expand all of this, so you will notice that these are assigned to zone A. And then if I click this one, it will highlight. There you go. <coughs> right? Okay. All right, so going back to the general here, what else for the... Okay, this one is all good. Details is all good. Okay. Heating information. The building type is um, a building. You can click that if you want to modify the space type. Okay, you can select from here. Okay. So this is very, uh, the very options or the tools that the engineer uh, designers need to check out whenever they go to the space type settings. So as you can see, it has its own uh, parameter values here. Okay, so don't forget that you can play around with the zoning here. Like, for example, if I select the zone A, you can actually isolate that one. So you'll be able to see that. So let's say I want to go to zone B. So it will uh, isolate there. Okay. And then you can also orbit that. You can zoom in and then you can orbit. So you can see your design there. Okay. So now I'm just going to select. I'm going to select here calculate. 
So it will take some time for for us to be able to finish that. And then once we finish the heating and cooling loads analysis, it will now go here on our project browser. Of course, it will pop up on our uh, view, which is the loads report one. But if you're going to your views discipline and then move the slider down, there's these reports that you can expand, which is actually our loads report, which is this one. Okay, so you can also access that from the uh, project browser. So the Revit MEP performs a heating and cooling loads analysis using the integrated heating and cooling loads analysis engine. So as you can see in this analysis, various factors are analyzed, including the analytical and inner volumes of the spaces. So as an engineer, as a designer, you can review the loads report to analyze the project, the weather, the space and zone information of the building. Okay, so take note that you must perform a new heating and cooling loads analysis each time you modify the building, the space and zone information, or make any changes to the model. Otherwise, this loads report that we have here will not reflect your changes. Okay, so after you have performed the loads analysis of the model using the IES engine, you can export the model information to a third-party software and compare the results if you want. So to export the model information to third-party software, you need to create a GBXML file. All right, so like what I've said, we are going to export this model to a GBXML file. Okay, if you want to export the model information to a third-party software. So before we do that, we need to go to the energy optimization. And then after that, we create energy model. Okay, so it creates the energy analytical model. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. And then I'm going to select this one. Okay, so let's select that. And then let us just wait until it's finished. So as you can see, here on our project browser, it already finished. So there's our analytical spaces. So this is now our model. And then this is our uh, system zones. Okay. So what we are now going to do is let us export our model to GBXML file. So let's go to the file. Let's go to export GBXML model. Um, I'll use energy settings. I'll select here OK. And then let me just save this on my documents project. I'll just save it here. Okay, so this is my uh, project GBXML file. Okay, and then I'm just going to save it. There you go. So if I'm going to open up that document, so this is now how it looks like. So let's go to the project. This is now your GBXML file. Okay, so the file now is saved in XML format. All right, so basically this is how you do your heating and cooling loads analysis. Okay, so don't forget the tool. It's here on the heating and cooling loads analysis. So make sure... You modify the settings here. You go to details. You can change by zone. You can change by zone here. The zone properties, you can change that. And then you can also change by spaces here. So you can modify each space here. So hopefully you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right. So thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.